Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, where I teach you the basics of capsuleering the spaceways of New Eden. Today we're going to be looking at missiles and how they work, whilst also covering the basics of what a ship's signature radius is and how this works too. Now if you enjoy this video or find it useful, let me know at the end by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and ding that bell to make sure you never miss a video. Let me know what topics you want to see me cover by commenting below or finding me on social media including the Catskull Cartel Discord's public channels. Details for all of that are along the bottom of the screen. Finally, if you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can come join me and those lovely people that you see listed at the end of the video on my Patreon page. Alright, thanks for listening, let's begin! Missiles are a powerful weapon type in EVE Echoes. If correctly used, they will always hit anything in their range and are commonly used for missile kiting, a technique that allows some missile ships to complete anomalies that are higher level than otherwise would be possible for a ship of that tier. Missiles also tend to share their damage across all damage types, so whether you're hitting shields or armor or hull, they'll do a decent smack. They do have their downsides though, including rate of fire and the possibility of overkill, but we'll discuss those later. Now before we can discuss how missiles themselves work, we need to first understand what a ship's signature radius is. Now in EVE Echoes, the actual size and shape of your ship's graphics means nothing, and instead the ship's signature radius is used for working out interactions. Think of a signature radius as how large and clearly the ship appears to scanners and weapon systems. In short, your ship is represented by an invisible sphere, and the size of that sphere is dictated by that signature radius. The larger the radius, the larger the sphere, and the easier it is to target, lock, and hit the ship. Cruisers usually have a larger signature radius than frigates, for example. Now, there are certain modules in EVE Echoes that can modify the signature radius of a ship. As examples, target painter modules increase the signature radius of their target, and an active micro warp drive will increase the signature radius of the ship using it. Now we'll cover each of those things in more depth elsewhere, but for now, that's all you need to understand, that a ship's signature radius defines how quickly and easily it can be locked and hit. Alright, with that covered, let's talk about the missiles themselves. Now most weapon systems come in two flavours, short range and long range, like snub nosed railguns and rifled railguns. These are of course then divided by the module size, small for frigates and destroyers, medium for cruisers and battlecruisers, and large for battleships. In essence, this is true for missiles too. Missile launchers are the long range version, able to fire further, but the launchers fire less frequently and the warheads typically do less damage. Torpedoes are the short range version of missiles, with more of their capabilities funneled into the warhead rather than fuel. This means that they deal higher damage than their long range counterparts. Small missiles and torpedoes are designed for frigates and destroyers. Medium missiles and torpedoes are designed for cruisers and battle cruisers. And large missiles and torpedoes are designed for fitting on battleships. There are some exceptions to this of course, such as stealth bombers, which are frigates designed to fit medium and large torpedo launches. Missiles do also have a third option, rapid missile launches, and we'll cover these in more detail later. For the purposes of this video and in general conversation though, unless stated otherwise, missiles is used as the catch-all term for missiles, torpedoes, and rapids. When we look at missile launchers statistic pages by long pressing on a module, this is what we get. So let's go down these statistics one by one and explain what they each mean. At the top here we have the damage types. From left to right these are electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic and explosive. Different ships have different resistances to these damage types, but for now suffice it to say that electromagnetic and thermal tend to be more effective against shields, whilst kinetic and explosive tend to be more effective against armour. Now, as you can see, missiles tend to have a fairly equal spread of damage types. This means that they don't tend to excel at any one damage type, but they also don't suffer against any particular defense either. Tech level here is simply the tech level that you must be at in order to fit and utilize the module. As Alpha clones cannot exceed tech level 7, they will not be able to use tech level 9 modules, for example. Meta level is similar to how other games have rarity. It's a representation of how powerful the module is compared to other modules. Power grid requirement is simply the amount of the ship's power grid that it takes to fit the module. The total power grid requirements for all fitted modules on a ship cannot exceed that ship's power grid. 
This is to stop players fitting oversized modules to ships, as the large and medium modules require more power grid than a small ship can usually output. Again, stealth bombers are an exception to this, but they have clearly defined roll bonuses that reduce the power grid requirements of the larger modules. Again, don't worry about that too much for now. Activation time is the time it takes to recharge a module. I'm sure you've seen the blue circle that fills around a module when it's in use. Activation time is how long this circle takes to complete a cycle, and missiles are launched at the start of each new cycle. As such, this essentially can be considered the time between launches. Explosion velocity and explosion radius both define how much of their damage capability missiles actually do to individual ships. If a ship is in range of a missile, the missile will hit and explode. These two statistics define how well that damage is applied, and we'll cover this in greater depth in a moment. Single hit damage is fairly explanatory. Given ideal circumstances, such as a stationary ship of the correct size, this is the maximum amount of damage that the module is capable of doing in a single hit. Missile range is calculated by the duration of the missile's fuel and the velocity of the missile itself. It's that old distance is velocity times time thing that you were probably once taught in physics class. Sometimes you'll see bonuses to a missile's velocity or to its fuel duration. These will affect missile range. Now, of course, missile range is the absolute value of how far a missile can travel. Anything outside of this range will be safe from the missiles as they'll fizzle out and die before hitting their target. Do note that since missiles have to travel in a curved trajectory against a moving target, you sometimes need to be within this absolute limit to hit, as the curve will add extra distance. This means that missiles may also struggle against a target moving away from them, but are more effective at closing targets. Alright, well let's go back and explain those explosion stats. Now, in very basic terms, when a missile is launched, it flies towards the enemy ship, and if it contacts the target's signature radius before running out of fuel, it will explode. The size and the speed of this explosion is defined by the explosion radius and the explosion velocity. The amount of damage dealt to the target is ultimately defined by the amount of overlap between the finished explosion sphere and the target's signature radius. This is what we call application. This is where things get slightly more confusing. First of all, let's look at explosion velocity. As the missile explodes, when it hits the end of the target's signature radius, if the target ship is moving faster than the explosion velocity, it will essentially outrun the explosion, receiving little, if any, damage from it. As such, a faster explosion velocity will apply damage better. An explosion radius is the description of the final size of the explosion sphere. The bigger the radius, the bigger the sphere. Now, as the missile's damage is spread across this sphere, a small ship will not take much damage from a large explosion. If it's only hit by 10% of the explosion, it'll only take 10% of the damage. Now, in basic terms, a small, quick explosion will apply its damage better than a larger, slower one. The issue is that the bigger single-hit damage numbers are on missiles with larger, slower explosions. That's the trade-off. Small missile launches will apply their damage better than large missile launches, but their total possible damage is usually lower to compensate. This is where that third type of missiles comes into play, rapids. In essence, rapid launches are missile launches of a size down. Medium rapid launches are essentially small missile launches, and large rapid launches are essentially medium missile launches. They have similar statistics to their smaller counterparts, usually the same single hit damage, explosion, velocity and explosion radius, but at an increased rate of fire, hence the name. This means that a cruiser fitted with medium rapid launches can pose a strong threat to destroyers and frigates, where the medium torpedoes and medium missiles may struggle to apply their damage to smaller, faster moving targets. This gives missiles great versatility. However, missiles are not without their downsides, and one of the largest is the possibility of overkill caused by the delay between launch and damage application. See, when a turret activates, it fires. The calculations are performed and the damage is applied to the enemy ship immediately. This simply is not the case with missiles. As we've discussed, when a missile launcher activates, the missiles are launched and begin travelling towards their target, exploding on contact with the target's signature radius. Now, if the target is far enough away, however, a second missile may be launched if the first has not yet hit. 
This means it's possible to have multiple missiles in flight towards the same target. Now, should that first missile do sufficient damage to destroy the target, then any other missiles in flight are wasted. They have no target anymore and will not redirect mid-flight. This means it is possible to waste entire volleys of missiles. This may not seem to be too much of an issue at first glance, but when you have launches on a 12 second activation timer, that's a full 12 seconds of combat wasted. That's 12 seconds extra of enemy ships shooting at you, and in some cases, this is a significant loss of damage over time, or allows an enemy ship to get within range to cause some real problems to you. In EVE Online, weapons also use ammo, and whilst ammo is not currently a concern in EVE Echoes, as it doesn't exist, should this ever be added in future, then Overkill also wastes ammo, and by extension therefore, ISK. Missiles are a versatile weapon system to train into. With the right abilities as a player, and the right skills as a capsuleer, you can arm yourself to challenge almost any threat. If missiles sound like your thing, be sure to check out my videos on missile skill progression, which talks about which skills to train as you advance. I also have a video on learning to missile kite with a Kaldari Kestrel. This Tech 3 frigate is capable of clearing anomalies as high as level 6 or 7 on its own, making it a very powerful ship for the budding ratter. If you have any questions at all, make sure to come join the Catskull Cartel Discord and select the Eve Echoes role. We'll gladly answer any questions that you may have. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!